Galatians 2 verse 1 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Growing up, I was under the impression of doing good works and our traditional spiritual practice as a way to be saved. We attended church every Sunday and learned some matters concerning Jesus in my youth, but just took it as one of those stories and didn't even bother to know more about it. I was exposed to alcohol, drugs, sexual immoralities during my teenage years. I even became a father at the age of 17. I didn't realize the consequences, but instead of dwelling on my past, I just have to learn from it and move on with my life. I was still at a young age, and I just thought to myself that these are all the usual stuff nowadays, especially when you're exposed to those kind of environments. I grew up in a Christian family, so I was surrounded by God and the church from the very beginning, but just followed through the motions of doing Christian things that I thought was the right thing to do. I knew who Jesus was, but didn't have any personal relationship with him. My mom was actively involved in the church and have witnessed her doing her devotional and prayer time every day. I even attended church regularly with her because I felt that I had liked her. I was leading a worthy life that includes drinking, smoking, sexual immoralities, just to name a few, and same-sex relationship, which is the typical thing in the school that I went to. So I committing myself to God is not even in the equations because I assume that my life will be boring and miserable. My wife, Verna, who was my girlfriend at that time, invited me to go to CCF during one of my visits to the Philippines back in 2008. I was uncomfortable at first due to the fact that it is not the same way that, that I used to, but was actually touched by the message. On how it relates to our daily life struggles and how to react in those situations. I even re remember reciting the acceptance prayer, but I realized that it was just from my mouth, not from my heart. We got married in 2010 in the Philippines and reunited in Japan after years of being in a long-distance relationship. We found a small church and attended regularly. I even served in the music ministry, but felt that my heart wasn't fully committed due to the worldly lifestyle I'm living in. A year later, I got laid off from my work, which forced us to go back in a long-distance relationship again due to financial instability. So Berna went back to the Philippines and I moved back to the States to look for a new career. I find it very challenging being away again with Berna, knowing that we are going to have a baby soon. Unexpectedly, I was invited by a friend to a church, to a Christian church, and attended regularly. Listening to the messages in the church has helped me know more about Jesus and His Word, especially going through those difficult times. One Bible passage that I was holding on to was Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That verse reminded me that truly God is in control. We were discouraged and frustrated due to the fact that things didn't work out as planned, especially during my pregnancy. But God blessed me with a career that helped us not to experience any financial hardship, even though Mike is unemployed at the time. So when Mike got rehired back to his job for a two-year contract, he immediately did process our papers for us to migrate here in the U.S. But since I was leading a good and comfortable life in the Philippines, I was making excuses to delay the process, and that is one of the reasons I don't want to rush moving to the U.S. But I was convicted on how God designed the marriage. The two should join together to be one flesh. So three years after, 
me and MJ decided to move to the U.S. with mine. Everything seems to fall in the right place at the time, and our dream to be together as a family that we could call our own has begun. We attended church regularly, but not intentionally due to the same worldly lifestyle and desires. Parties and drunkenness almost every weekend is my husband's normal routine. We even tried to attend a Bible study group, but just took at this as an optional activity every week. But despite of that, I felt like we are doing okay as a family. Since we attend church every Sunday and sometimes, I'm sorry. Since we attend until the time when homesick strikes and fell so down as full-time housewife, and how we started to focus on our imperfections that resulted in misunderstandings, frustration, and even came to the point that we are both tired and couldn't stand each other anymore, and thinking to just separate ways and accept that our relationship will not go farther than we thought due to our differences. I was also trying to pursue the same career in the Philippines and was relying on my own strength, thinking that I can also be successful like when I was back home. So I tried to apply and study to get the license that I needed, but failed a couple of times. Then I felt that I would it was the beginning of how God was trying to get my attention. One day, I was watching one of the pastors preaching. He mentioned that we also need to discipline ourselves if we really want to have an intimate relationship with God. I cried and realized that it is my relationship with Him that is missing. So I decided to ask Christ into my life again. So then I started reading my Bible and spending time with Him, which I called my morning coffee with Him. In May of 2016, God answered our prayer by putting me back in the service as a full-time active duty. But at the same time, we were told that we had to move to a different location within three months. I started to reflect and ask, ask God to help me live a life with a purpose. We were overwhelmed by worries and doubts, which place we're going to end up moving. I remember that I just plainly told my wife that we'll just pray and ask God to put us in a place that we will grow spiritually, just to calm, just to calm her down and not worry too much. In the same month, I found out that I got selected to go to San Francisco. And Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I, I, I froze for a moment. <clears throat> I froze for a moment in the shop. Because of the chances of me moving within the same state, it's very slim. But God showed us that there is nothing possible with him. We moved here in the Bay Area in November of 2016, and our faith was tested right at that moment, when unexpected conflicts came up and the stress of moving and looking for a place to be. But by casting all our cares to the Lord, because He is in control, He blessed us a place to live and finally settled after almost a month of waiting. I found out through searching online that there was a CCF here in the area. I was, I was the month, it was the month of January of 2017 when we attended our first service at CCF San Francisco and immediately felt at home just being surrounded with God's family. We were invited to join a small e group every Saturday night but felt hesitant due to our weekend activities. But out of curiosity, we went anyways. After attending a couple of times, we've noticed some changes in our lifestyle. We have learned to set our priorities by putting God first above all else and let Him be involved in every area of our lives. Sharing our life experiences, struggles, and how God works in our lives day by day gave us that feeling that we never felt before. We've opened up our home for our Saturday, for our Saturday group, which our son MJ is also looking forward to every weekend. The joy and excitement of just being together, talking about how amazing our God is, is indescribable. 
Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25 says, And let us consider how may we spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up eating together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. After all, we, we realize that we are living like kind of Christian before. Because we just knew God but never had a relationship with Him. We now see things in God's perspective. We have learned that His grace is sufficient for us to go through whatever challenges that comes our way. And just be excited to His plans, which is always or what's best for us. We've also learned how accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is all about. It is not just something you say, rather it is something you have to do to commit while we still exist. It is acknowledging that we are a sinner, that God loves us so much that He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins in full, so that we can restore our, our relationship with God and spend, spend our eternal life We've also realized that it is not how much you know about the Bible. Instead, we ask ourselves if the Bible increases our knowledge or it increases our love for God and intimacy with Jesus. It is about where the scripture points to, which is to live like Jesus and fully surrender our life to Him. Because our testimony is determined by our character, our conduct, and our conversation. And if one of these doesn't match, then we have to reflect and examine ourselves if we are really to work, truly true a follower of Christ. Little did I know, God is transforming me to be the person He wants me to be. I've learned to submit to Mike and be contented on what we have because Jesus is the only one who can satisfy us. It was not easy for me to continue pursuing my career intentions, but I have learned to cast all my cares and worries to Him and they hold on to His promises. Exodus 14 verses 13 to 14 says, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Lord will fight for you, you need only to be scared. This verse helped me to continue to sit His will and be totally dependent on Him. Those times that I took my exams, I remember arriving at least an hour early not to study, but to praise and worship Him while inside the car. God showed me the difference of being fully surrendered than being proud and relying on my own strength. I thank God for using my struggles and allowing me to be broken, to exercise my faith, and to rely upon His wisdom. I don't trust in my own efforts anymore, because I know that God will take care of me. He is the source of my power to turn away from my sins and to recognize His presence everywhere I go. Me and Bert are now both serving in a ministry and we just recently started our own DB. We felt tested at first and doubting ourselves if we are ready and prepared for this. But with prayers and by God's grace, we were led to obey the Lord's command to make disciples. We are really grateful and excited to what God has planned for us, especially to have an opportunity to witness and to have an impact on someone's lives, most especially to their eternal destination. We are not perfect. We are still learning, still failing, still growing, and still being conformed to His likeness. I am Michael Justiniano. And I am Bernadette Justiniano. All praises and, and glory to God. God.